I will remember Will. He will remember nothing because he's dead. <laughs> Hello, bonjour, como estas? And welcome to episode 26 of the Adventures in Novus podcast. Fun fact, over 99% of podcasts don't even make it this far. I don't know if that's true, but it sounds right. The side of... <laughs> it's a big number, you gotta aim high. It's good, I like it. The side adventure with Thor is wrapped up, and we are back with our main group close to Betchland. Our social stuff is in the notes. If you can take a second out of your day to like, subscribe, or leave a five-star review on whatever platform you're using, it'll really help our podcast grow. And hey, we'll follow you back, boosting your numbers too. Before getting to Betchland, I just want to make it clear for now that the people of the Valley of the Lost are safe. For now. Thanks to the heroics of Saltok and Thor. Everyone made it underground, and they're building a community for themselves. Harsk is happy for the company and happy to share his knowledge of how to survive down there. Due to the portrayal of Skeeter, you can be sure that Kalam is ready at both exits if anyone would dare to use the elevator. There's enough food and water down there to survive, but they are essentially trapped down there. They are in control of the only method of travel, so they are safe. Got my shovels ready. <laughs> gonna be digging. We're going to be digging soon. No one knows about Skeeter's betrayal either, so we'll see how that comes back into the picture one day. This leads us back to our heroes in Betchland. So... We will recap episode 21 to remember where our main group left off. This episode's recap belongs to Crick. Hello, friends. When last we meet, we leave Erwin and go in grassy lands for a week-long walking. Crick speak with ancestors, and Travis learned doing this too. Anders speak with God Okroma for the first time in a long time. Then Anders and Crick start feeling strange feels inside heads. Before finally, Crick's crew find small girl on side of road beside dead dad. She say she attacked by a dire wolf, but she played tricks on nice heroes, and actually she doppelganger. We fight. Note on dead dead elf men looking for help in Bitchland to stop big mean giant mans. What crew do next? We find out together. Thank you, Crick. Good talking and remembering. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I want to address right away before officially beginning. Again, I am dumb. Alligators, crocodiles, wands, and rods. Wands cast spells, not rods. So the items that our group got from the doppelganger are a wand of invisibility and a wand of summon monster too. We also had someone write us asking about Crick's training with Esmeralia Defronia, as we just kind of left that unfinished. At the end of the day, Crick decided off mic that he wanted to keep his feet that he was retraining. So even though he started the training, and I may have said words like, forget, during said training, since it was never finished and Crick leveled up, I let him keep his original ability. With the help of the ancestors, of course, for I am kind. And the ancestors are giving me nightmares every night until I did so. So here we are, back on the road to Betchland. So here we are. It is the 25th of Gosran, the 18th day of the journey. The heroes of Fayhaven are back. Baby! Crick, Anders, and Travis have just defeated the doppelganger and found a note on the Elven Messenger that read, Giants attacking Betchland. Please help. You are still where you left off in the grasslands. There is one lonely tree with many arrows in it. Oh yeah, and everyone is covered in blood from Crick's gross bloodbath spell. He's a creepy guy. There's a dead, headless doppelganger and a dead elf on the ground. Anders is now conscious again, thanks to Crick's heels, and Travis is feeling more drained than usual as his body reacts to the ant's poison with his constitution drain. You guys are still a day's travel away from Betchland on an overcast spring day in the grasslands. You just found a dead note on the elf. What do you do? Do you finish trying to bury the elf? I believe we intended to bury this uh, poor chap. I think we should, we should still do so. Is this the thing that human peoples around here must do? I don't know. It's only right. Actually, I think he elf. Hey, does anybody know what the elf custom would be? Well, I'm sure rotten on the surface is no custom of worth. I don't know. Maybe they do. They'd like these uh, nature things in elflands. But it's okay. We can dig hole. Anders, get to work. Can I roll a knowledge check of some sort? A nature or... Ooh, I don't know. Something to think what an elf would want with their body. No, knowledge elf, I believe. Like, <laughs> I have knowledge local. I could throw it in the forest. Do they like 
strap it to the tree, maybe. You could try a knowledge religion to see what some elven gods might like, but you don't know what god he worshipped. Oh, I do have knowledge religion. I don't know what god, but that's an 18. So you don't know what kind of elf he is, but if he was a wood elf, he would like to be buried just outside the woodlands in a tree line of trees to help grow more trees. If he was a high elf, he would want an intricately carved watertight coffin with their favorite books and works of art. Well, looking at this bloke, I imagine he'd probably want to be buried near the woods unless he's one of those fancy type that needs to have all the pomp and circumstance. Uh, well, let's just assume that he ain't the fancy type because we don't have fancy things. Yeah, is there any dirt under his fingernails? <laughs> There's an average amount of dirt under his fingernails. Yeah, yeah. And there is a tree with many arrows in it close by. I've marked this tree. We can, we can bury him here. I think this would work quite well. Let's do this. All right. Let's uh, bury him, I guess. I'd like to soften the ground a bit with my uh, earth breaker. Just pound the ground. I'm, I'm very good at that. We've, we've proven that because I can. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the soil really soft around the base of the tree. I'm not, not, not hitting any roots. Yeah, you guys can definitely do this. Uh, Travis will soften the ground, and you guys can dig a hole, put him in, and do you say any respects? Going to dig a hole, going to put a nerd in it. <laughs> While friends are digging hole, a crick go beside other tree and um, lie down, close eyes for a few minutes, get some nice rest. Uh, well, I guess it falls on me. Uh, I don't know what, what god you worshipped or really who you were, but... I wish you peace in the afterlife. Maybe he joined ancestors of his ancestors. Maybe he did, Crick. So you guys have another day of travel ahead of you. Anders, I would like to remind you that you can ask Artie to try another knowledge check to see if he remembers anything, and that you can do this once per day, which is a history check to see if he remembers anything from his past. Right, I forgot about that mouthy bastard. <coughs> All right, let's... Let's out with it then. Hey! How's it going? It's going just fine. Cool, cool, cool. You have something to say for yourself, sword. Uh, are there any demons around? No. Oh, what do you mean? Be more specific. Well, you know, I'm just dying to know more about you. Do you remember anything yet? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can try, I can try. Just let, let me, let me think, let me think. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I can't remember anything. I'm sorry. I tried. Maybe we can try again tomorrow. Yeah, I figured as much. Maybe one day the two neurons that are in your whatever brain you have will finally connect together and we'll get something out of you. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you could just hit something for once. I did. I did. You, 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 eventually, you're just really bad at swinging me. We'll learn together. Can we, can we do some training? Maybe you and me. Pretend I'm a demon. I'll put on a little demon face. And be like, blah, 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 blah. We can we can fight a bit. Get him. Maybe a camp tonight. Uh, friends, this is not time for shenanigans. Oh, I, I camp tonight. No, we don't need. We need to be leaving. Well, yeah. Like the, the next time we. Can. Okay. But not right now. No, we, not we, right now. I was. Just, I just had the idea. We just see not for giant men are attacking these places, so we should go. Yeah, we we, we gotta we gotta. Wait, are we gonna help them? We're gonna warn somebody. Um, I don't know yet. We must get there. Find out. Okay. Betchland how? Right, on the Betchland. So is it a straight shot to the city? Are you crawling, walking, hustling, running? We walk normal times. Yeah, we know it to be about a day. I mean, I guess we could hustle for an hour or whatever before we get tired to get as close as we can. Sure, this is fine. No problem. Yeah, we can, and we can fast track this a bit. It's just the last day. So you guys will hustle along throughout your last day, take another rest. Is there anything you guys want to do while resting? Um, Kirk wishes to do, at night time, he do his ritual for a mask. And he shall attempt to commune with the Lord Okrama one more time. Uh, well, again, not just one more time. <laughs> I did get a lay on hands of, a, I believe, a meager one hit point. So something's there. Yeah, Anders, you do feel more connected, more at one. You feel this warm feeling. You have your powers back. When you try to talk to Okrama, you do feel a presence, but Okrama isn't talking to you, but he is listening. And you do feel a connection. 
Right, well, we'll have to try to do better than one hit point next time. I mean, I almost died yet again. You do understand, Okrama, that if I die, you're kind of up shit creek, right? The pendant vibrates a bit on your chest. Oh, maybe put that a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> are you speaking out loud to Okrama, or are you speaking in your head This would, I think doing? this would be in his head, probably. Internal monologue, as it were. Travis will spend a bit of time, uh, like he was before, trying to trying to connect to his ancestors, uh, probably through his mom and through Gaius Ray. And the rest of the time, he he, he does kind of want to focus on, as he's walking around the camp and looking around during his time, he's going to start noticing where the shadows are. He, he likes to, to think he's trying to be a little bit more sneaky as he's getting around. He's like, ooh, I'm going to pop out of there. Ooh. And he's going to be trying to, trying to blend in with the shadows a little bit as he's uh, walking around the camps. Yeah, it is overcast, but there are still small shadows in some places, and I like it. Um, so you guys sleep. You find a nice spot to hunker down for the night, and you begin your travel at first light with the dawn painting the sky of hues of pink and gold on your last day through the gr- through the glass through the gl- the glasslands. Man, that place sounds shitty. <laughs> Ah! 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 Why did we come this way? Ah! So sharp. It's just glass. Why are we crawling on our hands and knees? Why did I have to do this? I had to do squirrel. It's glass! (laughs) Everything tastes like glass. (laughs) The glass antelopes. (laughs) Through the grasslands. I'm sure they're singing gay old tunes and complaining about their GM all the while. Um, Kirk wishes to bring up a point for friends here. Um, Anders, you're doing very good works keeping Kirk standing. I like this. Um, but one problem seems to be you falling down lots lately. Um, uh, Travis, you must have seen this too, yes? Yeah. Well, Perhaps in Bitchland, we, we try to get another friend, like um, uh, Akimbo. Some, some, we need new Akimbo, yes? Oh. A yeah. D- a, a new Akimbo? You mean i got to put up with another one of those bloody... Oh, we'll uh, see. How about that? Anders, Akimbo become friend in the end, yes? Yes, he did, but it took a lot of, you know, dealing with his non-stop talking and his... He did opinions. Speak. He did speak many times. Yes. He wouldn't shut up. This is true. Travis, what you think? I think we could listen to Crick. Aha, uh-huh, yes, these wise words indeed. Hey, here's here's some good ideas. So, you know, some extra people between Crick and whoever we're fighting is right up his alley, so mm. and I'll get those people like they could be between you and the enemies too. As long as protecting Crick, uh, yes, this is a good idea. Well, I suppose. We'll see. We'll see if, you know, because if he's an annoying, you know, braggart. Anders, we're going to try to save sister. We must need friends for this. Right. We'll try to stay away from the from the shop first. Look, uh, look I've been to Betchland, all right? There's some questionable type there, so we just got to be careful. The questionable, That's all I'm saying. Questionable like you, yes? Yes, I came from there. Well, I didn't come from there, but... But you mighty fighter. You're strong man. You protect Crick well. Yes. Well, just guard your nethers, gents. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I think we could find a maybe a, a, a healer too. I'm not, oh, still feeling the effects of that little ant guy that we fought. Oh. Yes, you have been looking rather pale, Travis. You still feel this, yes? Yeah, it's, it's still around. It didn't go away like uh, other poisons here. Hmm. Uh, maybe we try this new uh, item we have, yes? Sipling rod. Oh. That, that's what the, oh, right, that's what that thing does. It's Here, the, let, let's see how it works. Um, one moment. And, and Crick starts digging through his pick. Crick get the sapling rod from backpack and put it in the ground. Mm, wugga wugga. Do your thing, sapling rod. So Crick grabs the sapling rod, which appears to be the limbless trunk and branching roots of a miniature tree. And it takes an hour to grow and bear fruit. So you guys are chilling for an hour as this thing starts to grow and it starts to bear some edible fruit. It produces two D4 pieces of fruit. Three. So you got three pieces of fruit. 
And you get to choose whether these fruit are cure moderate wounds or lesser restoration. Oh, those look pretty juicy. Yes, this looks very nice, actually. Perhaps you wish to try. Yeah, yeah, that might that, that might help. Uh, I heal two of my damage, so I'm only at minus one now. So you should you can eat another one? I don't think you can. I can eat two in twenty four hours or something, right? Is it two? Yeah. So do we care, or I'll just heal that the next night? I think you should use. Yes, I mean this. What it for? Okay. Yum yum. That's all it needed. Thanks. Hey, these are these are very good. Yeah, perhaps you keep this last piece of fruit uh, for later. So you might need healing sources. Ah, uh, but I, I can't. I can't eat anymore. Ah, yes, yes, of course. It's you, like it's filled my belly, kind of magically. It's fun. You're you're right. This makes sense. Anders, you take this. Yes? Yeah. If you have any more damage, if you're still hurting from the, you, you don't need to eat now. You just must eat by tomorrow. Do you think if I, you know, maybe put this in a container, I can ferment it in some way? <laughs> I don't think that's how this works, but um, you feel you free to try, yes? Mm. Healing booze. Now there's an idea. So now it is one week before you can use the sapling rod again. Yes. So after you guys deal with the sapling rod, and I assume grab it out of the ground and put it back in your pack. Yes. You note that you're the only ones traveling on the road today. This trip is uneventful. Maybe too uneventful. On a lighter note, as you've been traveling, you've been getting closer and closer to the Dragonspine Mountains, and now the skies are finally clear, and you get your first good look. The peaks of the mountain range seem to soar endlessly into the sky, casting jagged silhouettes all over the grassland as the sun passes over from east to west throughout the day. So there are your shadows, Travis. You can start studying them as the sun goes over from east to west throughout the day. Can I roll a knowledge geography to know more about the dragon spines? Uh, yeah. <laughs> six. With a six, you know the dragon spine mountains are very dangerous, and they're shrouded in myth and legend, but you don't really know anything beyond that. As the sun begins to set, nestled at the foot of said mountains, at the edge of the grassland expanse, Betchland. There are things your characters will know either from experience. We know Anders and Crick have been there before, but also Travis through conversations on the road, I'm sure. Betchland has anywhere from two to 3,000 inhabitants at any time, being one of the last large havens for all manner of different fantasy races. The entire city is ringed with walls that are constructed with ancient moss-covered stones that seem to have grown from the earth itself. The walls are only eight feet tall, but they are sturdy, with watchtowers at regular intervals where the guards keep a watchful eye. You guys will know that inside the walls, Betchland is laid out similar to Atlantis with concentric rings. The first ring inside the walls are the permanent residents. They take pride in the defense of their section of the wall. Then there's a circular road around the city and another ring of buildings, which is the market district with shops and inns. Then a moat around the center and the center is the house of government and houses for elected officials. You approach two massive wooden doors between two watchtowers to the southern entrance. Normally, these doors are wide open as Betchland is very welcoming to travelers, but right now they are firmly shut. Soldiers glare down at you from the walls. What do you do? Oi, bitches! <laughs> Inders, eh, I don't remember these doors being shut before. Do you? Well, I, I didn't... I mostly kept to me shack out in the woods there, so... Yes, yes, I, I remember this where I find you, yes, but still, this is very strange. Something does seem the matter, I'd say. Hey, Travis, have you been here? Uh, no, it's only what you guys have told me along the way. I mean, all we have is that note that we found. Yes, yes, I, I think something bad happening. I mean, we hear from notes, so maybe just this, yes? Maybe they need some heroes, huh? Uh, yes, 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 us. I don't know if they'll see me as a hero around these ports, but... Ah, this perfect time for you to tell them how you hero, and show them how you hero. Yeah, you didn't have all that experience from the forest before, right? Now you're a hero of their haven, right? Eh? Yes, we are, all. I suppose. Well, I still do owe these people a certain debt of gratitude, so, you know, we see if we can help. If we can get through these blooded doors that are shut tighter than my arsehole when that uh, Betchlin doctor investigated it. Um, Crick raise up hand and go towards the uh, gate. 
Hello, Goddard's friends. How are yous? As you approach closer, bows get drawn and pointed in your direction. A small watching hole in the left wooden door is pulled open, and two eyes stare at you, looking up and down, left and right. What be your business in Betchland? A crick wearing wooden mask, looking out with him with red eyes from small slits in the mask. Hello! We come to f- uh, be friends with yous, and we are heroes. Shifty eyes take you in. He does a sense motive. 18. A crick speaks truth. <laughs> <laughs> we are heroes. <laughs> How do we know we not be spies from Kalam? Well... Um, easy answer is, uh, look at me. I just be seeing a mask. Oh, I always forget this own, yes? Uh, one moment. And he pulls off uh, his mask. Uh, he's a half-orc, he's a half-orc. Uh, there's no half-orcs in clamor. Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Yeah, rhubarb. Yeah, really nice hair. Okay. Yeah, and he's our, he's our leader, so, you know, you know we'll, we'll, we'll cool with all that. I don't know if we trust the other one. The other one's kind of shifty. I don't know. <laughs> Anders will step into view of this uh, porthole and attempt to vouch for his friends. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember me, but I was uh, a citizen of Betchland for a, a period of time, I suppose you could say. And uh, I can vouch for these lads. They're not spies. If my word means anything. Roll a diplomacy check. Good call, by the way. Yeah. Can we attempt to <laughs> aid? No, because we were talking to. <laughs> it's not. This is a two on the, the die. <laughs> With a two on the die. It was an untrained skill. Have you ever seen that guy before? No, I haven't seen that guy before. The fact you see just like pairs of eyes go in and out of the hole as they're all trying to <laughs> take your measure. Maybe I can help jog your memory. And uh, Anders takes a big swig of his booze bottle and then mimics throwing up everywhere. <laughs> Uh, you remember this? Oh, it's the drunk. The drunk in the shack. <laughs> yeah, 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 that guy was cool. That was all right. <laughs> Yar, okay. You're not here to spread the word of democracy, are ye? Spread the word of democracy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are we talking hell divers now? <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's a pirate? <laughs> <laughs> Yar. <laughs> Answer the question. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a democratic process is probably preferable to... Oh, no, that's... Sh- you can't let him in. I mean, I guess this is a monarchy area, you know, around these... Bo- I don't know. I'm not a political science major. What the fuck do I know about this? Yeah, we'd be calling it Tamako Crazy in these parts, so we don't want none of that in these walls. Uh, uh, all right. Are, are you fascists? No, we be communists. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> um, uh, Greg always say uh, no talk politics, yes? <laughs> yeah, I agree, I agree. All right, open the doors! Yeah, thank you, friends. Good work, Anders. They, they, they really like you, I think. <laughs> so on the other side of the gate, you hear the sliding of wood on wood as a large piece of timber that's used to brace the door. <laughs> it's removed. <laughs> You guys are immature. (laughs) And the wooden doors creak open. Uh, We'll get through this, boys. (laughs) A handful of guards greet you as the doors open. Most of them are dressed in patchwork gear. Some might have the odd proper piece mixed in. Some have short swords, spears, and you can even see one holding a pitchfork. Clearly a civilian that's been added to the militia due to dark times that they've had recently. A human man in the nicest gear speaks to you. He has a peg leg. I be Gerald, captain of the Betchling Guard, and these be my betches. Well met. The, I, I Crick, this Travis, and Anders over here. I think maybe you might know him a little bit, yes? I kind of recognize the drunk, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I find this, this drunk uh, not that long ago, and we go into f- uh, other places like Fay Haven. We had sent word to Guare for aid for our giant problem, a double entendre. Yes. We didn't expect aid so soon. Uh, yes, we, we are here to help, yes, but we do have bad news for you. Um, here. Uh, and cri- dig around in pockets. I, we find this note on Elfman. Here. Oh, the word didn't even reach him. Oh, it's a sad day, says I. No, it was not this far. Only got one day away. But 
uh, we here anyways. We, we were already coming, and now we here. It is a blessing that you are here, especially so close to Redemption Day. You know about our giant problem, but now we be having a calam problem. It be oh. not, it not even be an hour ago where someone else came through with a warning saying Kalam has its sights on us now too. Now we have to worry about two things, so we've closed our doors. Oh, uh, please tell me, uh, who is it to come here? Is it army of Kilim? A half elf be coming with a warning says that we are next after another village that they'll be pillaging. Oh no, this is not good news, Anders. Do you know this man, this half-elf? Mm, no, I can't say I do, but I, I do recall the blooded Calamians after our last toss-up with them. Yes, they're not our friends. Not at all. Oh, I'm wondering about this uh, re- redemption day. What's that? Uh, yes, yes, I hear this too. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow is redemption day. Saren Ray bless us. She will relieve us of the dark tidings for Betchland. It's all a sign you folks showing up the day before. I just know it. I also know that in me bones, they are connected. I just don't understand how the giants and Kalam, but you should definitely talk to the traveler who just be coming through. He'd be a half-elf staying at the Cloak and Stagger. Think his name be Bat Horse or one of them weird elf names. Bat Horse. <laughs> the Cloak and Dagger, you say? Cloak and Stagger. Well, we will speak with this dark horseman. The Cloak and Stagger. It's been a while. We will speak with this bad horseman. Oh, and maybe we'll down a point or two. Hey, also, Anders, perhaps um, with Redemption Day, uh, this might be perfect time for you to be coming to this Betchland place for redemption, yes? So, yeah, I don't know if Anders has ever been conscious for a Redemption Day, but every year, Seren Ray releases a healing light from the Dragonspine Mountains. It shoots high up into the sky and flies right over Betchland. It's a chance to repent for past deeds, to be forgiven, and start a new life here in Betchland. And, um, yeah, so you just write a note on what you want to change of your life, and you can start fresh in Betchland by being bathed in the light from the mountains. Uh, I've never had any time for that cock and bull nonsense. This is okay, yes, but um, remember, we're coming to be friends and be heroes here, and you try to be a good person so you can get sister back. No, no, we'll do it. I'm just saying I never took part because ah, yes, yes. I found uh, much greater healing in the uh, bottom of a bottle, you see. Yes, you do this many times. Yeah, and once I can figure out this fermentation process with this uh, healing berry... Yeah, do you need some water? I can create water in there for you. <laughs> yeah, please. And then I can just turn it into booze. That's right. Well met, Mr. Uh, Captain Gerald. Aye. Thank you for good news as well. Not good news, but news. Also, just so everybody know, and maybe these things tie together, but... Great doom coming. Watch yourself. And you see Crick has shifty eyes looking around. I see the beginning of these dooms with these dark tidings, for sure, says I. Yes, yes, many people that speaking in, in ways you're speaking, uh, they, they know of these dooms too. I, I find these people in Fair Haven. Or, sorry, no, Traders Haven, yes. Aye, all the havens, to don't, be sure. Don't go winding him up on the doom, he won't stop for hours. Well, doom is very important. Everybody must know about doom. Yes, yes, we've seen doom around every corner so far. Exactly, this is how you know ancestors speak truth. It do be strange. The giants in the mountains have always been at peace with us. For generations, we've had no problem at all. They be doing their thing in the mountains, and we stay out of them. Twice they've now come. First be a male, the second time be a female. They climb right over the walls and smash around a bit before making off with one of our citizens back towards the mountains. Oh, these very terrible. This is not good. Aye, our guards can't even hurt them. When are you expecting the next one? The first one come about a week and a half ago, and the last one come about three days, so it seems they come every week. Oh, no. Um, do you know what kind of giants these are? Oh, they be tall, tall and strong, and they only got one eye. And the female, the female's taller than the male, at least ten leagues tall. We've even lost some of our best warriors trying to track them. They never come back. Our great leader, Richard Marks, has put a 1,500 gold bounty on each of the giant's heads, he does. Uh, uh, this bounty, um, how many lig? Um, what is lig? He kind of holds his hands apart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay, a that's a made-up amount yeah, of what? space. 
About a wagon size. <laughs> <laughs> Ten wagons tall. At least two wagon paths tall. <laughs> oh, these are tall. We see these wagon sides. It, it, sometimes one wagon length is enough to fit many, many people. Aye, the roads always be too small around these parts. Indeed. Uh, one, one other thing, uh, Captain uh, Jerry. Uh, boy, Gerald. Gerald, yeah, sure. Uh, have, have you heard uh, tell of any uh, lass by the name of Tonya by any chance? Aye, I fucked her good. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. It's just a shit on everything. <laughs> She's my sister, you see, and I'm desperately trying to find her. I don't be knowing any Tonya in Betchland. I'm sorry to say. Oh, unfortunate. There do be a Doc Fingers, though, if you need any aid. My butt always be hurting afterward, but you can't argue with the results. Yes, I'm quite familiar with Doc Fingers, thank you. Oh, so you're cured, you are. It's great to hear his practice is still running. He's a very good doctor. Anders, this one you speak of, yes? Yes, it is. Hmm. Maybe we not speak with this man. No, by all means, go and uh, have yourself an appointment. I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> What's its Yelp rating? Five point five. This not even numbers that work. <laughs> shit, shit. If you want to be going to the cloak and stagger, just take a right, right here, and look for the sign with the stumbling man on the left hand side. Down a ways. I'd be here if you need me. Okay. Yes, we go right, right. Let's go. No, right, right, no, right, and then a ways, and then left. Uh, okay. It's a circle road. You cannot get lost in Betchland. Thank you, thank you. It's all right, lads. I think this place is uh, the first place I learned to get to when I was in Betchland. Well, then, stumble on. Indeed. So traveling along the streets on the way to the Cloak and Stagger, you get a glimpse of inner Betchland. The first thing that strikes you is the amount of diverse races hustling and bustling within. Elves, gnomes, humans, and all the halfers, half orcs, half elves, and halflings. There are no half gnomes when the Pathfinder races. That's kind of a shame. Among the halfers, you even spot a tengu and a tiefling wandering around going about their business. No elf orcs either. Cobblestone streets greet you, and the air is filled with a harmonious blend of different languages and a rhythmic clang of hammer against anvil. You smell the various aromas of cuisines from the housing district, which are a bunch of townhouses side by side along the inner wall. Each house is unique, reflecting the personality of its inhabitants. The bustling marketplace on your left side is adorned with colorful banners, stalls, and shops of all sizes that offer a myriad of wares, fabrics, metalwork, food, miracle spring water. <gasps> For a low, low fee, I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe some carbuncle jam. I, I, I know here of these uh, miracle spring waters before. What, what enders? Do you know what these are? Unfortunately, I do. Um, it sounds very nice. Maybe we get some. It's a it's a bit of a story, but before I left uh, Betchlin with Crick here, there was a, a merchant, at least he was a merchant at the time, that, uh, you know, the one that would keep me well stocked in booze. He approached me one day and uh, asked me to come to his, his church, he called it, and uh, brought me up uh, in front of all these people. I don't know who these people were, and he wanted me to drink this blooded miracle spring water. Anyways, it tasted like piss. It, 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 uh, absolutely not. Yeah, apparently he's he's claiming to be a preacher of Okrama somehow. I don't know if he just took my blatherings and made a made a go of it, but he's not to be trusted. That's all I can say. Hmm. It's all probably a little foggy for Anders as well. It's hard for you to remember exactly what you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's all a bit of a blur, you see. And uh, his name was Skeeter Ripov, and he would uh, he would visit me weekly. And, you know, he was the only human contact I really had for a number of years. So uh, I didn't exactly throw him out of me house. I should have. But, uh, yeah, it appears he's turned to a snake oil salesman now. Well, Anders, eh, no need to throw this man out of house. I mean, we all need someone to hang with it. Yes? I suppose. It's just since being with you lads, I I, I see a little more clearly now what was going on. Well, he's very good. Nothing good. You, know, you, you can see all obstacles in your way? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Not too much copyright infringement. <laughs> yeah. You also see a sign of the cloak and stagger in. And outside of it. <laughs> and outside of it, there's a half orc wearing a drunkard's cloak, which is an empty barrel with holes cut in for the head, hands, and legs. Normally a suit of shame. But this halfer was just shamelessly advertising. Wait, there's a half orc wearing a barrel. Yeah, he's like mascotting. Yeah, he's alive. It's not just like a. Yeah, dumb. he's like spinning it around. <laughs> yeah, trying to get your attention. A sign flip. There's another half orc comes up. I invented the twirl. <laughs> <laughs> come one, come all, drink, drink, drink. Half off everything special for Redemption Day. And he's like dancing and shouting. Performance check. You hear that, boys? Half off. And he's doing a really nice performance as oh. he's doing it. Yeah. Crick, stop to watch this uh, very nice uh, fork man. Uh, green man, you do very good things. Thank you. Come in, drink, drink, drink. I mean, we were coming in anyway, but I was I'd come in here just because of your dancing. Thanks, mate. Oh, can you tell the owner that? That'd be really awesome. Yeah, what's your name? Uh, Gerald. <laughs> What? <laughs> you also Gerald. I have this very popular name in this place. <laughs> so you see, okay, so Gerald the Barrel. Is that really know who that is? Okay. Gerald, you a good man. Here. And Crick hand gold piece. Okay, take that off your character sheet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not starting to tell you see it. He's gonna watch. <laughs> Thank you. Go in, drink, drink, drink. And he continues with his little jig. Very it's like an Irish jig. Oh, I like this man. He's very good. Yeah. Is that gold piece like his year's worth of wage? Oh, yeah. That's yes. like, yeah. But uh, Kirk not see these green peoples in many times. So it's nice to see friends from uh, Blargtown. Right. I, I realize now. Yes. <laughs> He's a kinsman of yours. Indeed, yes. Uh, one last thing, uh, Gerald. Uh, you know of Doom, yes? Oh, no. Oh, I come back later. We speak. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye, friend. So you guys enter the bar, and it's definitely a dive bar, but it has all the necessities. There are lots of empty tables to choose from, as there are very few customers. Yeah. This place looks like crap. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, let's fuck this place. Let's avoid this yeah. bar. Yeah. There's a bunch. Gerald, of you fucking liar. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. We just go kill Gerald outside. Yeah. Take the gold back. Yeah. I do bloodbath on all of us and Gerald. Yeah. There's a bunch of carvings <laughs> on top of the tables yeah. and there's gum all underneath. Yeah. <laughs> fantasy gum. Yeah. Fantasy gum. So it's easy to spot the half elf sitting by himself at a table. Bale Thor, what are you up to at your table? Bale Thor is just sitting there. Presumably they have wine here. Yep. He'll be sitting there having a little sip from whatever goblet they have and reflecting on his harrowing journey and contemplating his next move. Yeah, you just had a very long journey yourself and a narrow escape and quite the adventure. So I bet you are very comfortable sitting down for the first time in a long time, enjoying your wine. He does feel alone. For he is, for the first time in a while, actually alone. So what does our group do? Uh, friends, uh, these look like must be men that uh, other Gerald call, yes? Yeah. Uh, is that the bloke? It okay. must be. Let's try something. Hey, Gerald. No, he didn't look. What? Like... No, 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 not you, Gerald. Okay. Drink, 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 drink. Okay. I do not think he also called Gerald. Oh, okay. I, I thought everybody here might be. Uh, Travis, use your brain, yes? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, statistically, I mean, the odds were good, so. <laughs> Actually, they're much worse. Okay, well, uh, lead on, Crick. Ah, okay. They start walking uh, towards this elf, <laughs> half elf man. And what do I see? What, what, do, what do he look like? You see a five foot six, five foot eight. You're sitting, like yes? He is sitting, yeah. But you can, I mean, you can see his legs and stuff, so you can guess how tall he is. He's not like super lanky and long or ah, anything like that. Like this uh, Danny person. Correct, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. They don't know what I look like. No. I'm huge. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he is, um, yeah, he's wearing a like a 
brown traveling cloak that sort of covers whatever's underneath. Um, you can see leaning up against the table is a uh, large ornate staff with a uh, orange bubble on the top. Other than that, you can see he's got sort of blonde, long hair that's sort of coming out and down his back. Um, but you can also see that he's got like kind of a bandana, I guess, on top of his forehead and tied in the back, just just above his eyes. Um, he's tan of skin and um, blue eyes. What color is the bandana? The bandana is white. Uh, it must be his gang colors. What ninja clan are you from? The white ninja clan. <laughs> okay, we go up to this new Patterson. Excuse me. Um, perhaps you are a bit horse, yes? He sort of turns and looks up. Uh, is Crick wearing his mask? No, Crick not wear a mask. He take off for uh, people it gets. So he holding by side. Okay. So he sort of looks up at uh, this new figure and goes, No. Do I look like a bat horse? Ugh. Gerald tell us that half elf men uh, named Bat Horse is in here, and we're looking for him. Maybe you see him. Perhaps he meant to say Baelthor, for that is I. Ah, yes, these words are almost exactly the same, so this does sound right. He has an odd accent. I believe he a pirate communist, yes? <laughs> <laughs> that concept is foreign in Elven. Mm, this okay, no problem. Uh, so okay, so you are Belthor, yeah? I am. Ah, good. Well met. I, of course, Creek. This Travis and Anders over here, big man. Can I call you Bat Horse? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bat Horse. <laughs> Le- he said it, not me. Leader. <laughs> Leader. <laughs> No, you may call me Balthor. Ah, okay, Balthor. We coming from uh, Traders Heaven. Uh, we ca- we heroes of Heaven. We hear maybe you have dark tidings for this town. W- would you please speak of these things? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, ex- first, uh, wait, 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 Crick. Come on. I mean, let's do this right. I mean, Balthor. What do you drink, mate? Ah, yes, yes. Good point, Anders. Yes. So, Mr. DM, what do they have as far as wine goes? Fine elven wine. <laughs> yeah. Do they have fine elven wine, I guess? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're almost in the furthest place from the elven yeah. lands right yeah. now. You're definitely not impressed by whatever wine you're being served. Well, Balthor may not entirely understand what the difference is between fine elven wine mm-hmm. and regular wine. Yeah. You know, based on where he's from. Yeah. So maybe he thinks it is. I don't know. It's up to you. Well, you're getting served basically a three out of ten red wine. Hmm. Okay. So it's up to Balthor whether he thinks that's good or not. This is a very fine vintage <laughs> of elven wine straight from Inishara. Uh, sounds pricey, but lucky f- for you, we are uh, decorated heroes, so our coin purse is rather large. Barkeep, uh, another of this finish elven wine for... Our, our new friend here, Balethor, and I'll take uh, an ale and uh, Travis. Uh, I'll, I'll want to try some of that wine. That sounds neat. All right, get a wine for him and Crick. He probably wants water, but I'll let him say for himself. No, water, correct. Yes, uh, very nice. Thank you. So you call to the bartender, and behind the bar, there is a tiefling male. He is slow to react to service because he's working on something behind the bar, scribbling away. He notices you calling and reluctantly starts to come over to your table. Yes, darlings, what do you want? Oh, we'd like some drinks here for me and my friends. Uh, your your finest uh, elven wine for my new friend Balethor here in the corner. And uh, an ale for myself. Uh, oh, another wanna... wine for... Yeah, yeah I want to try the wine too. My friend Travis, I almost forgot. And uh, One your... pint of finest waters for Creek, please. You heard the men. Okay, darling, calm down. I'll be right back with your drinks. <laughs> what, what is it you're working on over there? It's redemption day tomorrow, darling. I'm writing down all the things I want to be redeemed about, to be pure again. Oh, okay. Interesting. Toodaloo. What is toodle? 
<laughs> the bartender just keeps walking. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm asking like Anders and yeah. Travis. What 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 is Tudulu? Is this like um? It's oh. like nice caboose. It's like you got a nice behind. I think. I think behind the uh, oh, what? Your you, your your rump, your derriere, your ass. What? You, we donkey? Uh, yeah, you 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 donkey. <sighs> you, know, you look like a donkey owner. I'm a don. I don't know what you guys are talking about, okay. but uh, we, we continue. It's okay. Crick, think about this for later. <laughs> Would you like to sit down? <laughs> you guys are all just standing around <laughs> Beldor. Ah, <laughs> we've been waiting this whole time. Thank you, Beldor. Very nice that you ought to offer. Uh, please. And then sit down. Yep. Oh, yep. Sit down. So what are you in town for? Well, we mighty heroes, you see, of uh, Fair Heaven. Um, so we defeat the bad guys there. there are no more Kalam soldiers in this area. We save Princess. Did you say Kalam? Uh, I, I say many words, but yes, this was one of them. Yeah, we killed a bunch of those fuckers. I haven't heard of you, but if you claim to have fought against Kalam, then we are truly friends, or we can be. What bastards they is. They're not very nice peoples. At no. least ones we meet. Especially their ex-soldiers. Here, legend of very fine fighters of uh, lion peoples, yes? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that once you are indoctrinated into their ideology, you can't never be trusted again. Once you go Kalam, you can't go back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can laugh in a so, minute, dude. You're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Make me just laugh by myself. Ha, ha, ha. He laughs at his own joke. I, I was noticing again. I gotta, I gotta tone that back. So I'm, I'm trying not to. No, no, let the them try the best to. Part. No, no, I do it too much. Yeah. So I need to shut up a bit. God damn it. No, yeah, no, I, I, I like the laughing too. Yeah. It's good. N- notes for Alexa is Mike. Insert a laugh track wherever I yeah, want. Laugh yeah. track. <laughs> <laughs> but like a laugh track of our laughs. Yeah. Oh. although i do not have the urge to be labeled as a hero necessarily i do wish to contribute this betchland for this is the first time i've been here is in need it seems of aid yeah we were looking to just pass on through uh for our for a different reason, but we found a note on the way that said giants were attacking the village, so we thought we'd come on down and check it out. Just as you guys say that, the bartender comes back. Here you go, darlings. Wine, wine, mead, and our finest water. And yes, I, I can't help but have overheard. Business has been bad since the giant And attacked. I couldn't help but have overheard that you said mead. Oh, yeah, would that be an ale, darling? I misspoke. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> so taste bad. it and see if it's to your like. Anders senses motive. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender rolls a 14 for his bluff. Where's my sheet? Bartender was bluffing? Yeah. <laughs> 14. Ooh. 14 on 14? Oh, prick, what does that mean? A tie? I think that means that sense you win. motive yeah. wins, yeah. So, Anders, you sense the bartender's bluff. He forgot your order, and he gave you the wrong thing. Uh, Anders dips his pinky finger into the drink, and this is not ale. I wanted an ale. Well, darling, we'll count that one for free if you'll just drink it. And Anders tips it back and drinks it in one swallow. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then holds the glass out. All right, I'm ready for me ale. Okay, darling, I'll be back with your ale. And just the bartender leaves. And uh, <laughs> you can continue the story with it. Yeah. <laughs> I intentionally. Baelthor is going to turn over to, um, I guess, whoever's sitting next to him, either Crick or Travis. Is he all right? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some issues, but nothing when we can't uh, you know, keep under wraps to, to be heroes. Sometimes Anders needs these drinks for mm, confidence boost, but slowly he not uses so much. The bartender comes quickly back with the ale. I'm so sorry, darling. Please enjoy. That first one was on the house. That was my mistake. 
but my ears were burning. And I have to admit, business has been bad since the giant attacks. I'm going to be ruined if it stays like this. I mean, honestly, I'm charging half price on what is usually the biggest day of the year. I should be charging double at this time, not half. It's a travesty. Well, I'll do my bit. You can get me another ale whenever you're uh, ready. I'll have ales on tap ready for you, big one. You're so dreamy looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes, sir. And he picks away some of the flaked uh, vomit on his uh, shoulder <laughs> pad. <laughs> and the bartender leaves. <laughs> Anders will turn to Balethor and say, it seems like uh, most folk are running away from Betchland at the moment. And what, what compels you to run towards it, such as we? I was given a task by um, a survivor from the Valley of the Lost to bring message here of Kalam. I was simply doing my duty. I but see. Sorry. No, that's all right. What were you going to say? Anders would like to sense motive. Oh, let's go, roll off. I like it. 14. Baelthor is being honest. Oh, sorry, 17. That, not that it makes a difference. Stupid. And does that change does anything? <laughs> <laughs> no. Calamian spy, I knew it. <laughs> All right. What happened to you in this valley of lost? Well, myself and a few former companions were traveling our way through to bring word to the valley of the lost of Kalam's approach. And we made it there with a few complications along the way, so to speak. And they were trapped. So in order to get word out of the Valley of the Lost, I had to flee. With their permission, of course. They are safe, I believe. Tucked away in a small little underground fortress. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. It would be possible for you to be putting on my map. And it Kirk pulls out the map. Uh, where is this Valley of Lost? Perhaps in time. Trust is hard to come by these days. My old companions were untrustworthy in the end. So please forgive me. Crick's eyes narrow, and he never trusts Balthor again. (laughs) (laughs) This is okay. In time, perhaps, yes. Okay. Now you hear. What uh, what word is it you bring? That Kalam is coming to Ah. Betchelen next. How long does that give him? Yes, uh, when are these peoples coming? I do not know, but they were in the Valley of the Lost. A certain amount of days ago. Because I don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took you about ten days to get to from the valley to here. So ten days ago, they were attacking or approaching the Valley of the Lost. It would probably take them some time to take over, pursue the survivors, and then move on. Someone can roll a knowledge history on Kalam if they'd like. I don't have it. Uh, Crick get a 26. So with a 26 and with prior experience from dealing with Kalamians, Crick knows that Kalam doesn't just arm an army and charge at a town. What they do is they spy, they infiltrate, and they set up for success. So Kalam's eyes being on Betchlin doesn't necessarily mean that they're mobilizing right now for Kalam. It means that they're in the beginning stages of planning an invasion for Kalam, which would include some shenanigans to start. And when they get all the weaknesses and battle plans ready, it's then that they'll think about mobilizing an army. Okay, I I believe from other things here, we have some time before Kalam comes in full forces. Usually they only, they do small, small gatherings first. Oh, so then these giants pose a bigger threat. <laughs> An immediate one, yes. He, yes, he also never under, underestimate uh, Kalem. Uh, perhaps they got these giants into doing these things. We don't know. Yeah, they might have been poking at the defenses here a bit. It's no matter those blighters aren't happy until they have this whole land under their thumb. They must be stopped. I also wonder... 
if Kalam is responsible for provoking the giants, perhaps the giants do not know what Kalam wants with non-humans. There could be a way to aid Betchland with the giants. Ah, make more friends with these uh, giant creatures. One eyeballs. Very strange. I not see these before. Can anybody talk to them? Yeah, they listen to reason. I do not speak their tongue. Maybe we find them. Is that a knowledge nature or something on a giant? I, I do speak these languages of giants, so maybe we'd be able to speak. You speak giant, Crick. Ah, Crick speak many languages, yes. Well, you just full of surprises. I got giants living near places where Crick lives, so uh, usually a smart idea to have uh, known languages of enemies or friends uh, in regions. My dad taught me the, the swear words in giant. That's about it. Oh, those very useful. Yeah. You know what else, Crick? I'm also, I also love that this surprise doesn't involve blood for once. So, excellent. Full of surprises. Well, let's not be hasty, yes? Yes, the blood will come. In time. You can do a knowledge nature on what you've learned of the giants so far and see if you can determine anything else. Oh, baby. 20 for Travis. 28. Crick roll very high numbers. So with a 28 from Crick, you know that the giant was 10 leagues tall, which is assumed to be a foot, so 10 feet tall. You know it has one eye, and you search your brain for that size range of giant with one eye, and you conclude that it must be a cyclops. Crick no see these creatures, but I, I have read, so these things call cyclops. You know them to be very strong and powerful. You know them to uh, live either solitary or in a conclave of two to six, or maybe even a tribe of seven to 18. Might only be these, these two that they talk of, or perhaps there they are more. We must find out. Yeah, maybe we can do a bit of, bit of asking around town because we can find out maybe what they're coming for, what's taken each time. We can talk to some guards or something like that again. Go talk to Jerry. Yes, yes, this is a good idea. I believe Gerald said that it was people they took. Maybe they take certain peoples. We don't mm. know. Yes, maybe the racist joints. Or maybe somebody's pulling the strings back there to, you know, who, who they're going after or something. Maybe these Could important be. peoples in the town, uh, you know, mayor type peoples or wealthy peoples. Mm-hmm. How are your drinks doing, darlings? Ah! <laughs> more, please. <laughs> I assumed. Here you are. Uh, uh. Correct. No need more water. Uh, this is plenty for now. We must be nursing these drinks. And the wine is fine? I have had enough. Thank you. I, I thought that was pretty good wine. I'll, I'll have just an ale, please. Just, just like my friend Andy's. I'll be back with another ale. And I do hear a lot of gossiping. I do like gossiping. And just know my lips can move for a price. Do you know who, who or what was taken when these giants came? I'll give you one, that one for free, darling. One of the poor folks taken was Tallfoot, a halfling male. And worse, he was a customer. The other was Alia. An elf female. Sadly not a customer. I care less about her. I'll be back with your ale. Um, Belthor, what is it that you do here? I, you give town warnings, but do you wish to do things about this? Yes. Mm, very deep. <laughs> <laughs> Calistria guides me in what I need to do. I believe she is responsible for you finding me, so I would like to help. No, not Calistria. Uh, ancestors responsible for Creek. Uh, but yes, uh, we do come here, so maybe you come with us and find out more of these things. He sort of slowly sips his wine and takes a look at the three people and nods his head. I will. Mm, good, good. Um, so you mighty warrior, or how you survive these 10 days travels? And you also notice uh, Crick has his map out on the table, and he counting, guessing for days travel, 10 days, drawing lines on map, seeing where Belfort maybe be from coming. 
Crick uses his brain. Like that uh, tool that would come in those sets? Compass. What's it called? Yeah, the compass. compass. The compass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The stabby one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one I would just carve my name into desks with. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bale Thor will turn uh, to Crick. And let me guess. So you got a fancy staff. What about my fancy staff? You're a brainy. A what? A brainy. A small, small guy. You, 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 uh, I don't know. Magey, wizard, poofy. Things I don't really get. Sort of, I guess. I was granted my powers from Calistria herself. Here, let me show you. And he will um, cast the cantrip Mage Hand in order to continue drinking his wine. And it sort of like lifts it up and he'll sip on it. Hmm. Fine trick. Hmm. There is more, but I cannot show you here. It might turn some heads. Ah, uh, Mage Hand job. I get it. Aha. It turns heads. Cricket joke too. <laughs> ah, see. What is this hand job you speak of? <laughs> He's an inside joke. You would not get like cricket. And you look at Crick and he's like fake laughing because he thinks he got a joke. And Travis, he's just happy somebody's laughing with him. <laughs> <laughs> so the bartender comes back and gives another ale to Travis. Thank you. And is just holding his hand out, waiting for his... I would have guessed, darling. And from behind the bartender's back... He produces an, another ale for you. Not playing with me, are you? I like to tease. So, is, so this, is, this a, is this a man? Yeah. Okay. You said it was a man a couple times now. And I thought he has said man. Said. You guys have both said female. I think. Is that why? Yeah. Okay. I so that's why it's funny. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is a guy, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And is yeah, it's it's a modern day, you know? Yeah. I, I I assume so too. So that's why I was like, okay, but. Except no one plays with my booze. Anders smashes the mug on the ground and draws the blade and strikes at the barkeep. <laughs> the demon? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Bailed her. Yeah. You got PTSD. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, not again. Oh, no. Yeah. Not another yeah. one. There's another party with like a light beam coming down on them. It's like, oh, uh, that was the group I Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plan a. Hey, it's all right. <laughs> it's the plan a group. <laughs> There's a shiny a armor. <laughs> That's the other, the other boat crew. Yeah. yeah. The other boat crew. Yeah. yeah. Gaston. Gaston. There, yeah, there's a, there was a little bard and uh Bort and Gaston. Gaston and uh, like Alicia. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Gave Anders the other ale, added out the rest of that. Uh Anders and uh, I see you drinking many of these drinks again. We've only been here for moments. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not doing all the old Anders things. Start doing new Anders things, yes? Look, I'm in a place that I have some, some deep-seated memories for, so you'll have to excuse me. I need to, I need to lubricate my brain a little. Well, maybe, I mean, you don't want to have too much because you might end up back at the doctor's office. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. I'll, don't worry. I'll slow it down, mates. I'm just, you know. You're parched from the, from the journey yes, here. Yes, parched. That's it. Maybe drink waters then. Water very good for parching. Maybe you can alternate, you know. Yeah, that's, that's fine, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll get some water in me. Don't worry. I'll, I'm still fit, lads. Fit as a fiddle. Yeah, okay. Um, tell me, Belfor, do you have place to stay tonight? I only arrived about an hour before you came in, so I have not procured uh, rest yet. Do you know if this place here, they do these things? You'll just sort of turn over and, like, whistle to the bar. Yes, darling. Do you have rooms? Oh, of course. You see how empty it is in here. It's a travesty. We have many rooms, half price. Shall we take four, then? It's very good, yes. For the booze, I will cover. But you new friend, this is not right. We, we pay, we pay. Indeed. It's only right. Thank you, thank you, but no. We, we must pay. It's only, only correct. So it's a gold for everything. The rooms, the food, the drinks, and the night's accommodations. I would like to remind Anders again 
that he can roll a knowledge history on the sword because it is a new day. Oh, that was last night that we did that? It wasn't after the rest? It was after the battle. A knowledge what? I roll oh, it. You roll it. Yeah. You have well, to, you have to are, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we're in the inn right now. So uh, you can either do that at the table or you can do it by yourself in the room, however you want to do it. Uh, we're still at the table right now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this bar could, could do with a bit of liveliness. Maybe uh, let's see how the sword is doing, eh? You lads fine with that? <laughs> you can hear us, you hear? Yeah, we, we ain't talked to him in a, yeah. in a dingo's age. Oh, what? I, you will see. Anders shall unsheathe. Do, do not trouble yourself. It's okay. Just, it's okay. Verdant might. So for the first time, Artie. Balthor sees Verdant's might, otherwise known as Artie. The sword glows a light green. Can I get a perception check from Balthor, please? Mm. 17. Nice. Not a fail, Thor. With a 17, <laughs> you see writing on the blade of the sword, and it looks like hieroglyphics to you, but you've seen that style of writing before. You saw that while going down the elevator, down underground, in that area near the Valley of the Lost. Let's get cheeky! He thinks that means demon slaying. Balthor is going to jump up out of his seat <laughs> <laughs> and, and grab his staff. Yeah. And you can see he starts to try and cast a spell. Yeah. Um, and then stops when he reads, sort of sees the writing on the sword. Yeah. What is that? I've seen that writing before. Anders, 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 Anders. Is that guy evil? Well, he smells like demons. I smell demons all over this guy. Is this out loud or in his head? Yeah, you hear it. Oh, yeah, you hear it. No, I think he's an all right lad. Why do you have a lying sword? Well, he's a little misguided. You gotta, you know, you gotta get to know him. He really likes demons. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he liked demons. I think he hit demons. Oh, he likes, he likes I like killing like demons. Killing. Hey, sorry, Artie. And this guy reeks of demons. Something's demon about this guy. I can freaking sense it. Well, I mean, you've been sensing demons pretty much non-stop since I met you, and, uh... Well, wouldn't you call the doppelganger some sort of demonish thing? I mean, he was pretty excited about that. Well, let me tell you, I tried my smite evil on it, and it didn't work, so... Are all demons evil? But, but maybe you know good friends with Okromo yet. We don't know. What? Lots going on. You didn't... Uh, you didn't say Okroma. Did you? You look like somebody just pissed on your grave, mate. What you mean? Yes, he speak to Okrama sometimes. Only recently, really. It's like a nightmare. I cannot wake up from. What, what do you know of Okrama? Yes, uh, this is very strange. Most people don't know. You can see he's um, visibly gagging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th uh, there, oh, there was a... Oh! <laughs> person a man was one of my former companions a terrible slimy annoying person called himself brother ripoff oh no you know him yes I know him Skeeter that's the name Oh, you are not friends with him, are you? Well, I know him. Let's just say that. All right, I wouldn't call him a friend. That's for damn sure. That's good. That's very good. Do you know what a snake oil salesman is? <laughs> Absolutely. In, in fact, I was just coincidentally telling these lads uh, ab about this bloke on the way in. Yeah, we saw his miracle water out there in the stalls and we... We were trying to put two and two together. It seems like very nice uh, water. It sounds very nice. A great kind of wound. No, it's piss. And, and it's going to run you dry. But yeah, I wouldn't. Anders think regular water is also piss. So uh, he not very good judge. Perhaps Crick find out. Fair point. The marionette video out in front said it was good for my skin. So it was very hydrating, actually. What? 
Video? <laughs> it's a marionette, a little puppet show. <laughs> I never tried his water. He wouldn't sell it to me. He demanded gold for everything. Every spell, every aid, is every that, person. Is that not selling? No, it sounds like Skeeter to a T. Imagine a dying boy on the road and demanding coin for healing. Oh, this not, did he save this boy? He did. Oh, he with sounds our, like a very good person then. With our persuasion. Oh, maybe not as good. We found a hermit underground. Been there for a hundred or more years with nothing but a gnarled moldy staff and a wife that couldn't speak and he still tried to extort him constantly claiming okrama demanded coin for his services god damn it hey i'm afraid he was preying on me as well in my my time of need he's no, no, friend, you have to understand when I knew him, he was a, a blooded merchant, no more. Well, hopefully he is dead now. Be careful. It's not always good to be wishing such evil things on peoples. <laughs> you never met him. Yes, this is true. So are we going to kill him? No. Oh, okay. He's also not a demon, Mr. Sword. I'm talking about you. Oh, I also <laughs> think you were talking about the other person. <laughs> But no, no, we not kill this. Well, why was I drawn then? We, well, you, you, you like to talk. We figured you, you yeah, know, yeah. enjoy an opportunity to talk. Okay. So tell us about yourself. Okay, let me think if I can think about anything about myself. I'm, I'm actually tickling something this time. I think I, uh, I, uh, I kind of remember. Uh, I remember the last one who unsheathed, but it's pretty foggy. He wasn't a human, I know that. The first human I ever saw was Griff. Uh, yeah, he taught me your language. And, uh, now that I think about it, I've never seen any of your strange races before. Ah, uh, that's it, though. I can't really remember anything else. I'm sorry. It's all foggy. Do you not know who carved your runes? Uh, I can't remember. No. What does it say? I don't know. But they match the runes on an elevator... <laughs> Elevator. We went down in the Valley of the Lost. I've never seen it before. I never thought I'd see it again. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that's all gibberish to me. El Elevator? What? What? What's that? It's a platform that moves up and down. Oh, strange magics. Belthor, what, you know of these rooms? They, they're similar, you say, yeah? Yes, it's the same script. Hmm. Do you know who is one's making these runes? No, I do not. Well, you, did you write them down, or did you, did you did you talk to the person in that cave? We did speak to him, but I don't believe he knew either. Oh. We were distracted at the time, in a rush to save the people of the valley. I did not have the mind to examine it. Plus, he was fading. Old. Old dwarf. At that Kind of Travis's eyes perk up a little bit. Looks around to see if anybody registers that he was talking about a dwarf. I gotta say, I've never seen one dwarf since I've been around, but I remember there was a lot of dwarves back in the day. Where are all the dwarves? Uh, we not see many of them. We see a couple of only ones that are not living anymore. We had no dwarves in Grislania. Belfor, do these runes you find in the other place, do they glow? Do they change? Do they pulse? From my memory, yes, they glow, but they didn't change. Hmm. Maybe these are the same. It seems to be a form of ancient magic, not one bound to the schools that we know. Maybe in time you point out on the map and you show Crick where on this line he draw, which he think is close to areas you might have been. You, f you point out and Crick might learn some things about this. Of course. Thank you. Perhaps we should take our rest. The hour grows late, and I feel we have much planning to do. As you say that, the door to the cloak and stagger slams open obnoxiously, and four orcs walk into the bar. One of them saying, maybe he's not here anymore. 
And the other one's saying, Hit the hay and try again tomorrow. Oh. And a third one is saying, It can't be hard to find a mask in John Travolta hair. Yeah, he's puny with scars everywhere. It should be easy. Always talking about some doom. Tracks lead here. He's bound to have talked to someone about the doom. And they start walking up to the bartender and they show the bartender a poster, which is a crude drawing of a half orc with a mask and beautiful hair and says <laughs> reward, but it's spelt wrong. <laughs> R word. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen this puny pretender of an orc around? Oh, uh, uh, no. <laughs> I have not. And the bartender kind of panic looks at you guys and doesn't know what to do. And he's kind of frozen there. And so we see these guys, obviously. Oh, yeah. Do I, does Crick recognize any of these people? Crick recognizes orcs from Blarkstown. They were from a faction that your brother ruled, but they were very unruly. And they were very hard to manage, even under the rule. Oh, eh, eh, friends, eh, Crick not here. And Crick uh, uh, ducks under the table, leaving, forgetting his mask and leaning against the side of the table. I see a mask right there. Arr, you, what are you doing with that mask? Look at the hair, it's him. If you want to find out what happens, you're going to have to tune in next time. Oh. Crick, hide. Uh, First combat without Maggie. Oh, no. You can still summon Maggie, no? Takes one minute. Oh, that sucks for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We don't need to. We're not going to have a combat. This will be a nice, no friendly way. chat. Nice, friendly chat mm -hmm. with mm. the faction that didn't uh, get along with my brother, mm. who is now dead. <laughs>